<laughs> hello, hello, guys. Today is a very special live session for me because I finally have Anastasia here in, <laughs> in my improv improvisational studio. And Anastasia is a friend of mine, but apart from that, she is a TED speaker, a coach, and a writer who wrote an amazing book called Homo Distractus, which we will talk about at the end of our interview. And yesterday, guys, we started talking about motivation and about how to live a productive life. So today is our follow-up with talking to you, hopefully, about productivity, about how we can manage our technology, because this is your specialization, sure. obviously. Yeah. All right, and by the way, Anastasia is the person who gave up her smartphone in 2015, right? So I really want to hear more about that story. How did it happen? Sure. Um, fun enough, I actually worked at that time in a senior position in digital marketing here in London, uh, working for a very big and very famous tech brand. And when you work in technology, you tend to be connected 24-7. Uh, so, you know, I slept with my phone and uh, I was checking when I was going into the bathroom. I think lots <laughs> of us do that. And uh, I was paid to do creative work. I was an account director. Uh, but really, most of the time, I was just spending answering to emails. Uh, and I don't think most of these emails were even relevant. Mm. So, at some point, I just decided that I needed a break. And I decided to swap my smartphone to a very basic no internet phone, Nokia. I never thought this will become a permanent choice, uh, but actually it's been three years that I'm not using a smartphone. Oh my God. And that's probably one of the best things I have ever done. <laughs> three uh, years, <laughs> guys, three years. We can't give it up even for five minutes. <laughs> exactly that well by the way I don't think that everyone needs to give up the smartphone really? it's, it's no it's not about that it's just it's, it's a little bit like with chocolate so uh, Anna will be laughing now because the first thing I came here I saw a piece of chocolate True story. and I was like can I can I eat it uh, and she didn't even notice it but I'm the kind of person if you note if I notice if I have a piece of chocolate a cookie uh, next to me I will eat it straight away and in fact <laughs> Uh, here is a here proof. Is, here a is a proof. <laughs> I came and that's the first thing that I have it in. Uh, and the same, same thing with the smartphone. So I can't just resist it if I have it in front of me. Um, I, I become obsessed. As you know, they, they have done some time ago a famous experiment with rats when right. uh, scientists isolated the pleasure centers mm -hmm. in the rats' brains and they have connected them to with electrodes to the button. And the rat could push the button and then uh, the electrode would send the electric signal mm -hmm. and the rat will feel dopamine, the hormone yeah. of, neuro hormone of pleasure. So what happened to this rat, they stopped eating, they stopped doing anything, uh, but they just were obsessively pushing the button. Uh, and some of us are like this as well with our devices. Well, exactly. And this was definitely my case. I, I'm definitely like that as well. And I'm sure some of you guys, you experienced something like that as well. But actually in your interviews, I read that it was actually very, very difficult for you yeah, to, to give it up. You spent like five months. Yeah. How, how was the actual process of giving it up? So you were coming back to it? Uh, and then yeah. try it again. How was it? <laughs> it was it was a fun one. I like one of the biggest impressions was when I actually came to the shop to buy uh, myself this basic Nokia, you know, the one mm -hmm. with the snake. And I spent about an hour just standing in front of the shop window, <laughs> taking the box with this phone and putting it back. Oh and I was thinking, like, the shop assistant was looking at me like as if I were a really, really weirdo. Uh, and this is why I realized, well, actually, maybe I'm much more dependent than, than I was Gosh. thinking. And then I was, you know, I was telling myself, you know, like, like, should I really give it up? Like, how will I find my way? Like, yeah, what, exactly. what can how? I do without Google Maps? <laughs> how or? did you come here today? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my tube. <laughs> very, very easy. Well, the thing is, uh, actually, when I gave up my smartphone, I realized that um, I have outsourced lots of uh, my human qualities, including my memory to the smartphone. Right. And this made me stop trusting myself. But when I didn't have a choice, uh, I actually started memorizing things much better. Mm. Uh, so it's it a good exercise for your brain, It's right? actually a very good exercise. And also it's a very good exercise to, to your creativity because mm. memory is connected to creativity. And actually memory and imagination share the same brain regions. 
All right. Yeah. So the more we memorize things, like actually, the more you're likely then to come up with uh, creative solutions, or providing that mm. you're memorizing relevant things. I think that's very interesting for us because the majority of my audience they are creative professionals mm -hmm. from different industries. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be my next question. Like in general, do you think creative people are somehow different, like from the rest <laughs> of the world? Do they need mm. m some special strategy in their life to stay focused, to stay productive? Yeah, I think there are two points to that. One is creativity. Mm -hmm actually requires thinking space. Mm -hmm. um, where, when do your best ideas come to you? When you're sitting in front of the computer or when you're like mindlessly wandering around or staying in the shower or you just like did something completely that mm -hmm. was not related to creative work and then all of a sudden you have this like, ah, break for a moment. I th actually, like for me, I think it can be different for different okay. people, but from my experience, I really need these different visual stimuli. Okay. You know? Because when my like visual sensors, for mm -hmm. example, are stimulated, then some kind of very interesting mm -hmm. uh, process happens in my head, mm -hmm. and then I can create new ideas. Mm. Sometimes based on what I've just seen, mm -hmm. sometimes totally unrelated. But I feel that I really need something from the external world. Mm -hmm. It can be music. Mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes mm. my best ideas come on a concert. Inspiration. For example. But I mean, like it's. It's not something that you're special, you know, like you're sitting down and you're being creative, right? It can come. So your best ideas don't come, you know, like as you plan them, right? Yeah, of course, it's difficult, you know, to plan that, okay, I'm sitting down and yes, now I'm creating. And being creative. So this is an important one because how is this actually what's going on with your brain mm -hmm. when you do that? Is that your brain practically is digesting the information that you have been feeding into yeah. it, yeah? So this is the time when you're kind of doing something else, then your brain is being not idle, as you would think, but it keeps creating new connections between the facts. Mm -hmm. And this is actually how creativity happens. Because we learn through the context. So let's say that I'm learning the word green. Yeah. yeah. So my brain, like as if it were a library and a librarian, it puts this word in a particular shelf Right. And this is a shelf that has to do something to do with colors, mm -hmm. maybe with nature and with something else. And then creativity happens when these connections uh, are created with the words that were, for example, previously not connected. For example, I don't know, green and um, what what can't be green? Triangle. Triangle. Know, some well, shape. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's green and shape. Yeah. Cat. Like, okay, green cat. Something. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Creative, yeah. yeah. So this is something you know, green cat. Yeah. yeah. So, but but this is essentially essentially how creativity happens. Mm -hmm. um, I think in Harvard they have done a study. They asked uh, two groups of people to do some mental uh, work, so like kind of some calculations. And one group had a very easy task, and the other one a very difficult task. Mm -hmm. And then they asked both of these groups to do some creative work. And which group do you think uh, worked better creatively? Which, whose works were more original and more standing out? Those so who had like a lot of workload before they started yeah. or very little? So, so probably very little? Yeah, that's okay. exactly <laughs> it. Because when our working mo memory is overloaded, mm. uh, then actually we have no space to come up with original ideas. All right. Uh, but the problem is when we're online, we're constantly overloaded. Mm. So we're really Because overwhelmed. we're, yeah, because, you know, we have like the notifications and interesting uh, pictures coming yeah. up and comments and this mm. is uh, this is why it's very very important for creative people to make actually a space in their life when they don't have any external stimulation yeah but when they just process information that's so true I think with all this technology we just don't have the time to be bored anymore because even when you're waiting for a bus and you know you're on the bus stop you are constantly checking your messages, even if there are no new messages, checking, you know, Facebook on, or Instagram feed. So you don't have this time to get bored anymore. No, yeah, no, that's exactly and that. And actually boredom is a source of creativity, especially for children. Mm -hmm. You know, like if any of you has children, you know that they sometimes are very unhappy because they can't find something to do. Yeah. But if you leave them a little bit frustrated, uh, they actually start using their imagination. And I have a client who has a six-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, and when she stopped giving her the smartphone, the child said, wow, actually, like, there are so many exciting things I can do with my imagination. Absolutely. I think we all have these childhood memories of like mm. our, our own childhood memories. And I remember it really well. And we had this game um, with my friend. 
And I think it really shaped me as a creative person because mm. what, what this game was, it was just words. So we were calling each other every day and we had this imaginary world. I had my own and she had her. Mm. And every day we were sharing what happened in our world overnight. Nice. So we had to come up with all these ideas, you know, just while we were talking. So all these reactions in our brains, I think they had like just milliseconds to happen. I love this game. Yeah, yeah. and I think it really, really shaped me as a creative person because mm. that's why now I can like really quickly can come up with an idea if I if I need to mm. that's why when I'm pitching for a commercial client for example you know I have my own process it's not a big how problem great. how so great is you're, that? you're also right about boredom and childhood yeah oh, this, is, this is so cool I actually I do theater improvisation classes mm -hmm. so I don't teach them I, I do them myself and uh, we have one of the exercises when you're supposed to be pulling out imaginary objects out of the box. Mm -hmm. So you imagine a box and then you st start pulling out the objects. You pull them, you look at their shape and you name them. All right. uh, and you're doing it with a partner and the partner mm -hmm. is cheering you up. It's like, <laughs> so let's say like, cat, meow. Okay. Yeah, this is a cat. <laughs> like, hmm, carrot. Like, okay. Carrot, what else is there? And the idea of this, uh, this exercise is uh, to do it as fast as possible. All right. And then very quickly get to the point that you start repeating yourself. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> like, like it's like grapes, more grapes, like sports ball, like more grapes. <laughs> I was like, am I really not creative? Wow. Uh, but I think this is a wonderful exercise to just mm. let your ideas flow. And this is what That's came amazing. to me when you, when you talked about your... I love this exercise. I think we're going to try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we can try it now, but it, 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 it can be a bit frustrating. Do you want to try to do it now? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm afraid to do it. Well, I mean, I, I can try to do it. You can cheer me up. No, I think we can do it when we go out because we guys are doing some outside exercises later, which Oof. we will talk about Oof. at the end. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stick out, with, uh, keep, uh, keep stay with us till the end. We will talk about it. Uh, but now I think let's do the interview part and then we will switch to uh, sure um, uh, outdoor exercises. I actually wanted to add one more thing about creative people, specifically yes, the internet. So I interviewed quite a few creative people mm -hmm. uh, for the book, okay. uh, Homo Destructors, and one of them is a singer. Uh, she's a Grammy winner, Corinne Bailey Ray. I don't know if you know her. I heard, I heard yeah, her she name. She's, yeah, she's, she's, quite uh, famous. she's very famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that she finds frustrating is that instead of being like in the moment she's always dragged out of it mm. and her concern is that if creative person shares you know some of their ideas a little bit preliminary a little bit too soon if we expose mm -hmm. it to the public you know like yeah. we haven't still you know like before it's really shaped before it's really shaped before you know like we gave birth to this yeah. idea and we're posting it on social media already then this energy the creative energy is gone you know it's a very subtle one so you mm -hmm. actually need time for it to mature. And also, you know, like when creative people start depending a lot on the feedback yeah, of people, problem, you have to, yeah, like for example, I interviewed a poet and she, she used to have a very uh, successful Facebook group community and, and she stopped uh, mm. doing anything with it. And when I asked why, she said, well, actually, because I feel that this has started shaping my creative process. So creativity, it's, it's an interesting one. Like we are doing things mm. for the public, yeah. but we don't want the public to intervene too soon because I, it's a difficult one. It, it, can, it can kill the creativity because you know, like it's like, it's a little plant and it needs, you know, time to grow and maybe to shape. And feedback is great, but yeah. there is time for it. I couldn't agree more because actually like I did uh, some personal coaching sessions mm. with Anastasia a few months ago and you probably remember that one of my problems was that I was really obsessed with this kind of feedback at some point mm. not even feedback just watching other people's successes and then after you do it for a really long time you stop recognizing what is like the external influence and what is your true inner desire and your true inner vision of what mm. you want to do with your life and I got so confused because I couldn't see this border Mm -hmm. And I just think yeah, it was so crucial to just switch off all these social networks for at least a little while yeah. to digest all this and I make mean, a we decision. Do, I, I agree with you. Thanks for sharing. I think we do very much depend as creative people on other people's feedbacks. But social media def definitely amplifies that. Yeah. Because, you know, like, like even, you know, like the Russian poet Pushkin was talking about, you know, like the poet and 
and the public yeah. and like because uh, so this topic has been with creative people for Absolutely. a long time but I think now it's so instantaneous and so scalable in a way and then there is lots of pressure as well right like um, you have to develop Twitter you have to develop Instagram Facebook yeah. and you know you know it yourself very much and then you know like when there is time for creativity then because it's it's very difficult to put the boundary there right Absolutely. and like but the expectation from your management like whether you're an artist whether you're a poet whether you're like a um, designer is that you are supposed to have a big exposure and the same thing with writers so I'm, I'm yeah. a writer for example and you know like my publishers tell me no you actually have to have the following and because you know this is what they call the platform exactly yeah nowadays it's unimaginable yeah. like for example guys some of you might know that a uh, few days ago i tried to do a live session with anastasia like, <laughs> online and specifically for that session she actually registered on instagram <laughs> but it didn't work out unfortunately no <laughs> and, and we still don't know why yeah so some i'm not meant to be there <laughs> so we think happened but uh, I actually this is a problem because what how I feel as an entrepreneur because I think as creative freelancers we're still interpre entrepreneurs because mm. some people think okay I'm just a creative I'm not a business person but this is a disillusion for me because you still have to be a business person you have to sell your art right? exactly. or, like, or like or your vision or whatever your so concepts. you have to do all these like social media stuff so I was wondering how how you do it because you are the public speaker mm. you're a writer mm. also you need probably some coaching clients I'm not sure how Sure. You develop, so your time now? Uh, there are things I like and things I don't like. I love public speaking, um, so I try to do as much public speaking as I can. Um, um, I, I speak at the conferences and they go with companies. Um, I, I just sell tickets like to or, or normal people. Um, I've done like two events in the last two days. I'm going to oh, do yeah. one tonight. It's, it's it's a bit of a marathon now. Mm -hmm. uh, but this like this makes me really happy. And, and I think like people share a lot after this event. So in yeah. a way, I'm just doing what I love that, you know, people are doing social media for me. Um, I limited uh, the number of platforms I use. All oh, right. So what's what are you using? I use currently? I mean, I'm on Facebook, but on mm -hmm. Facebook, I'm not as a professional. It's just my own network. So, so it's your I, private crowd. In a way, I mean, it's people who know me in person. Yeah. Um, I do public posts, but it has high response rates because they have met me. Okay. Um, I have Twitter, uh, for which I have a person who is helping me with it. All oh, right. Uh, so I ca occasionally, so you're delegating I delegate yeah. it. I trust her. I mm -hmm. mean, we discuss the strategy. We discuss what we want to do. But uh, unfortunately, I cannot, you know, spend my time doing that because. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, you know, even she was complaining to me that for her, it's a lot of like mental w oh, workload, wow. like, yes, because there's lots of information, right? And our brain, you know, it's, it, we can't stretch it all the time, you know, like our, our resources are limited. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe like if we follow Elon Musk's suggestions <laughs> and we all become cyborgs, maybe, but I'm not looking forward yeah. to becoming a cyborg. And I have LinkedIn and uh, I still haven't figured out what I want to do with it because I find it mm -hmm. completely useless. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, people just <laughs> add you and then yeah. they never get back Nothing in happens. touch. <laughs> and I tried various strategies and mm, I, I and uh, I also like just did an experiment. I have posted the same post on, on free networks and I compared what had like the biggest engagement. Mm -hmm. And as you might expect, people who know you best in person, they tend to be much, much yeah. more engaged. Um, Facebook generally tends to work for me, but I think only because it's personal. Okay. What about, um, so, so speaking about delegating, yeah. I personally found that you can actually tell somehow if this is the actual person mm -hmm. speaking to you and producing really valuable, you mm -hmm. know, honest, genuine mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. Or if this is, you know, some oh, hired yeah. PR person oh, just totally. writing totally. random posts. So this is easier because this person who works for me for Twitter uh, helped me gather some facts for the book. Okay. Uh, so she actually knows what she's posting about. Uh, right. Then the strategy is all done by me. Um, I like I. So you're planning the. I, I, I'm, I, I'm yeah? planning. She does the manual work. Oh, right. No, I mean she does some of the content thing, but uh, she knows like the sources, mm -hmm. the credible sources. So she looks for the content. Uh, she posts like quotes from the book. Um, 
she you know like reposts retweets interesting pictures etc and she engages with certain people and I also occasionally log in and like Right. I, I, t I text them. So the clue is just to find the right person for the job, basically, uh, who understands It has area. to be, yeah, you, it <coughs> has to be the person with the same um, attitude towards life and who shares it. Because I had actually three interns before her. Okay. And they were lovely people, uh, but I was finding it a little bit overwhelming because I had to explain them every single mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it's so Because annoying. we didn't share the vision. And I think, like, <coughs> if you're a creative person, you definitely want to make sure that there is somebody who gets, you know, like, it's not about, like, what's their motivation, you know, why do they want to work with you? Mm -hmm. uh, and this person, she just believes it. So, you know, like, she, she, she does, like, uh, she takes breaks from technology and uh, she actually contacted me, like, on a completely different subject uh, online. She found me, she just liked what I did. That's great. And, and then this has led to the collaboration. Yeah. And I think that's just much better. Right, great. Let's come back uh, to self-discipline, mm. yeah, because I think everybody wants to hear some specific advice. Yeah, sure. what can you actually do? Especially, you know, it's like with drinking alcohol. Yeah, sometimes there's some people who are addicted, they yeah. start drinking and they yeah. they can't stop for a week, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Same thing can happen for me, at least with procrastination. So one day, like, if I start watching a TV series on Monday, it's like a, this spiral, you know, mm -hmm. which sucks me in. So let's imagine there is a person who is in this spiral of procrastination. So what can this person do step by step? By step? Um, I mean, is, is this affecting their life? I think it's probably the first thing is to recognize that this is actually having an impact. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good <laughs> this, one. Yeah, like I mean, it's like maybe, maybe they're happy, you know. Uh, another one is, you know, procrastination. You know, sometimes it's healthy because procrastination sometimes means that like either you haven't defined your goals very quickly, okay. uh, sorry, very, very, very thoroughly, uh, or maybe your brain doesn't think that whatever you are going to do is actually relevant enough. Okay. Um, you know, like. Or so maybe this is not your true goal. Yeah, maybe you think exactly. it's important, but deep inside you know that you it's know, not what exactly. you actually want to do. Yeah, so maybe it's just somebody told you that this is something mm -hmm. that you need to do, but you don't believe in it. So I think the first thing first, be very honest. Yeah. with yourself like is this really something that you want to do yeah. uh, does this really make you excited when you think about it or is it like man I, mean, I should have yeah. done that but sometimes we have things to do which don't make us that excited that's right? another one right yeah, like <laughs> then there is a part of like okay we actually have to do them and yeah. so what do we do uh, generally uh, remember about dopamine uh, dopamine is near hormone of pleasure yeah anticipation of the reward so what works is thinking about some kind of reward, how you will reward yourself uh, for a certain behavior. And I remember, I think, our example with you when you needed to write some pitch and yeah. then you promised yourself to buy yourself wonderful shoes. Oh yeah, it was from Anna Ganor Dominique, <laughs> who probably will be listening to this. So Anna, these were your shoes, which I rewarded myself with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it worked quite well for you. I think you were yeah. like, uh, it was it was a difficult pitch, it was lots of work, but uh, definitely you now think about some carrot that you can mm -hmm. give for yourself. And by the way, your technology can also be this carrot. In a way, uh, I'm going to tell you something about uh, how to motivate yourself to go to the gym in a second. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants to hear yeah, this yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, but with, with, with technology, I mean, technology can also be like a good mo mo motivator. You know, for example, you say, okay, I'm going to finish this exercise uh, or like, something I need to complete mm -hmm. and then I allow myself to go on Facebook because Facebook gives us you know dopamine or Instagram okay. or whatever or something like. else whichever makes you happy yeah yeah but I mean like you can also you know like you don't have to fight like you know digital procrastination just use it as uh, as a reward so the experiment um, mm -hmm. scientists have done an experiment trying to identify what motivates people to go to the gym they have developed. Uh, they have divided them in three groups. Mm -hmm. so the first group was given iPods with uh, very popular and very desirable audiobooks, mm -hmm. and they were told you can only listen to these iPods when you're exercising in the gym. Okay. Um, the second group was also given iPods uh, with the same books, uh, but they were told that they can listen to these books anywhere, mm -hmm. but suggested that they should do do this in the gym. 
but okay. no obligation. And the third one was just given a gift certificate, so no iPods, and they were still verbally encouraged to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like it's good for like you, it's good for blah, your blah, health. Blah. Yes, stuff, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then in a few months, scientists compared uh, how often each of the group went and how much they exercised to the gym. Uh, which do you think uh, performed the best? So obviously the group which was supposed to listen to the books in the gym. Only in the gym, Only exactly. In the gym. And in fact, uh, most of them liked it so much that uh, they continued doing this even after the Aww. experiment was over. That's great, actually. Like, if you want to really do something, just motivate yourself with something else. Like, yeah. while I'm doing that, I can also allow exactly. myself to do something else, which yeah. gives me dopamine. Exactly, yeah. So, if there is something that's unpleasant that you need to do, yeah, like, do something along with it or after it, but only that you allow yourself yeah. to do after the situation. So, kind of attach a more yeah. pleasant thing a to connection. an unpleasant. Yeah. That's a great advice. <laughs> what about some uh, particular ideas about technology? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, should I be switching my phone off? Well, obviously, yeah. No. Well, um, working or something like that. I mean, again, like it depends on what you're doing. But yeah. generally, I recommend that you try to save your mornings. Uh, and you don't work like you don't open your emails your instagrams etc up until you have completed at least one important piece of work mm -hmm. uh, because a your brain is still fresh in the morning okay. yeah and you don't want other people's agenda Mm. to be like affecting your own agenda yeah, yeah? That's a good one. and then this actually will make you feel better about yourself because you will feel that you have accomplished yeah. something because you already did something because you already did something yeah so like yeah. it will make you actually more productive uh, then another one when you actually uh, schedule some time throughout the day when you're not interrupted you know either by meetings or by messages and at this time it's actually desirable to leave your phone in the in the, in the other room Okay. Uh, so again, scientists have done an experiment and they asked uh, different groups of people to do some complex intellectual tests on computer. And the only difference between these groups was where they have placed their phones. So some had them on the, on the table, some had them in the pockets, some mm -hmm. in the bags and some in, in the other room. And all phones were on silent or airplane mode. Okay. So which groups do you think consistently had better mm. results in tests? So probably the one with uh, their phone in the other room, right? Yeah. Okay. So even the mere presence of your smartphone can be distracting mm. because... Uh, even if it's somewhere out of your sight, but yeah. in the same room. Because right? your brain, because it's like a temptation, it's like the chocolate over there, okay. which I'm still thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Don't worry, after we finish that, you can have I'm as kidding. much as you can. I, I'm kidding, but, that, but, but, <laughs> but basically know, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the idea, right? Like yeah. if there is, because instead of working and concentrating, your brain is constantly making a choice. Mm. It's a micro choice, it's a really small one, yeah. but uh, it's still a choice. And for example, Barack Obama or uh, Mark Zuckerberg or uh, Steve Jobs yeah. are used to wear the same style of clothes every day. Mm -hmm. Why did they do that? To minimize the choices. Yeah. Yeah. So even like small choices actually deplete your willpower. So mm. it becomes more and more difficult to concentrate on something. Remove your distractions. So. I think it's a really good point that our willpower it's not some you know resource which is like as big as we want it to be. It's no. like it's very easy to, you know, it's not infinite. wear it out in a way. It's not infinite. Actually, we wear it out throughout the day as yeah. we're trying to resist the temptations. Mm. And there are lots of them. Yeah, like there is like tasty food and, you know, something like you really don't want to work now, but you would rather do something else. And, you know, like our world is built on temptations, right? Yeah. Like everything That's is the problem. screaming so for like, help me, try me. And uh, it's quite, you know, this is why, for example, if we tend to go online in the evening or when we are tired, we will are likely to stay there longer and mm. we won't be able to control yeah. that because um, our willpower sits in our, in the part of the brain. Uh, prefrontal cortex that's yeah. responsible for uh, our self-control and uh, for getting things done and it's the first time that the first part that stops working uh, when we are tired yeah and you know like when, when this part that's is not strange. working so you just can't <laughs> control your behavior mm -hmm. you start behaving as a drunk person does it mean that if you have a really important project going on or something you really need to concentrate on mm -hmm. should you 
you know give yourself more like allowances in other parts of your life not to wear out your like willpower to save it for the important task what do you think or good 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 question uh, i don't know i mean from the like i i would say like do like your important thing first mm -hmm. because this is like where you can allocate your willpower especially yeah. if this is some effort and definitely incorporate some small rewards throughout the process so I'll give you an example with my book. Uh, I've been writing this book for about a year and a half. Okay. And it's a horribly lonely experience, right? Because you keep oh, yeah. writing, it never finishes. You close yourself down. Yeah, and like, and it's, you know, like, and you keep rewriting, rewriting, and you keep adding new information. And um, it's very difficult to keep yourself motivated for that. Uh, so you have yeah. to have, you know, like daily and weekly celebrations of what you have achieved or even of the fact yeah. that you have done something. Definitely. And this can be you know, as simple as, okay, like I'm gonna finish this in one hour and I'm gonna go for a nice walk mm -hmm. because that's what I'm enjoying. Or I don't know what, I'm gonna buy myself like shoes, but you will yeah. need a very big wardrobe. You will have that. a lot of shoes if you're writing <laughs> exactly. a book for a year so, Exactly, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a minimalist, so I, I oh, was not get, 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 getting my shoes, but for me, like for example, uh, walks outside and being outside is a very big reward. Mm -hmm. well, like, you know, like even like going like to do some exercise or wh yeah. wh 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 whatever you like, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, I think an another problem with our like, contemporary society is that we forgot how to appreciate these tiny achievements, like little oh, baby yeah. steps. Oh, yeah. We think that if you if I didn't win an Oscar yet, then I'm not worthy, you know, or like, oh, come on, this is just a small festival or this is just a small magazine, whatever it is, uh, like, guys, it works in your industry, but I think mm -hmm. it's crazy. And I think for creative people, it's very, very important Difficult. to celebrate, you know, whatever you've done and yeah. maybe not even the outcome, but the effort that you have put into it. Because yeah. really, you know, that's the effort that shapes us, you know, like the more we exactly. invest the energy into something, the more we start respecting ourselves. Because really, you know, there are lots of psychologists that talk about like the field, you know, the surrounding one. Yeah. And our like energy field or like psychology field, we have certain figures, you know, like I have you like as a figure, somebody else, and I have my own figure. And I start respecting my own figure in this field, like if I actually know that I'm working hard. So, you know, like for example, even if you're going to the gym, you're yeah. not seeing lots of results, but you know yeah. that you're putting lots of effort you actually start looking differently and people start uh, perceiving you differently yeah. because of this effort you start respecting yourself more. Absolutely, I noticed that. I mean, it's a big one for me with me and the gym <laughs> because it's so difficult. But when I make this effort of doing some exercise, of course nothing can change in the mirror in a couple of days, mm. but it's some psychological process because I think that I, I start looking differently and I'm more, you know, self-conscious and But that's I'm exactly what happens, myself. yeah, and then this uh, has an impact on how people see you as well because people don't see us for who we are people yeah. see us for how we perceive ourselves exactly uh, speaking about this like walks you mentioned you you love to do you moved to Barcelona recently is it so um, I'm between Barcelona and London so okay. life is mainly in Barcelona but uh, London uh, I do lots of talks in London I come here every month yeah so I, I'm wondering how you think physical space and city we live in influence mm. this uh, technology and psychological overwhelm. It's, it's an interesting one. Um, so remember what we said in the beginning about rats? Yeah. Uh, who were dragging themselves to death. Um, <laughs> so there is um, actually a second part of the story. And the story is they were doing this because they did not have, they were living in the impoverished environment. Yeah. So they didn't have any tools or anything they could use to construct their own environment. All right. So the only way to stimulate themselves was actually to drug yeah, mm. themselves. Uh, it all changed when actually scientists introduced some tools and you know some wood or like things that they could actually use to change where they were living oh, and the really way. Well. Guess what they started doing? So they started building like the little They stopped kind of drugging things. themselves and they wow. started d d building things. Um, so this is really, really important for us because really this proliferation of, you know, like digital addictions and all kinds of addictions, you know, some are recognized by society, some, some are not, you know. Alcohol to a degree, right? Like it's, it's allowed, for example. Uh, but this is happening because we are living in the impoverished environment. Uh, I think about like 90% of uh, young men in South Korea and China mm -hmm. uh, sh are short-sighted really? because they don't go outside oh anymore. So like they're just like looking at, 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 at things. 
um, you know, like this is an impoverished environment. This is an environment for rats. Uh, most of us spend our days in the offices or doing the work that's really meaningless. I certainly spent doing this like for many, many years, you know, just like making the pretty PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. And this is an equivalent of, you know, like becoming this red. And obviously the only thing we can do is just to keep on pushing buttons. It's like red race. Uh, so d it, it is a red race. So and, are you saying that people in London are more like... I'm not saying... Uh, no, 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 I know you were asking that. No, no, what I'm saying, you asked me Doing about... Doing this red race, basically. No, 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 you, you asked me about the impact of the place. Yes. So what I'm saying is there is definitely okay. an impact of the place. Uh, I'm not pointing to saying like this place okay. or that place. Uh, definitely, you know, like in London, we have this culture where you're only successful if you're like online for 12 hours or 14 hours. Mm. Constantly uh, pushing. Constantly for, pushing yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm very concerned with this model of success because mm -hmm. I don't think this is necessary. Most of the time people spend, you know, like doing work actually, like they could have done this in three, four hours very yeah. easily. I think the beautiful thing with Barcelona is that people are much more appreciative that it's integrated Mm. into the landscape there is sea you know yeah. like which uh, after the working day you just go there you like there are mountains 15 minutes uh, away and that's what i really like it so i can be in the city yeah. but at the same time also outside um i mean you know work needs to be happening uh, but i think you know most and foremost it needs to be meaningful absolutely and yeah. most of the people who work here in uh, in london i've met uh, they don't feel they're doing meaningful work Oh yeah, that, that's, uh, a, that's the and, that, and that's problem. an impoverished environment, right? And it's you know, like, how can we change that? Because you know, this is creating, of course, like the ground uh, for all these kind of addictions. Even if we never tell ourselves that we have this problem, right? But we want, you know, we want to be happy, you know. It's, yeah. And we only start, you know, get becoming addicts when our own natural habitat gets ruined. Yeah, you know, like exactly. when we are put into the unnatural environment, yeah. and you know, like when we don't see beautiful things, or when beautiful things uh, cost lots of money, yeah. which is another problem here in London. You know, <laughs> like kind of like yeah. it's very difficult to find a beautiful house, for example, that's you know oh like really makes you happy. Real right? estate theme in London, and it's like and it's the crazy, same thing right? like with rats, right? Like you're almost like you don't have any control, any tools to control your own life, right? You know, like all animals have know a possibility to build you know like their nest their whatever they, they where they yeah. live and here it's quite difficult and I think this is definitely having an impact that's very interesting all right I think let's finish with uh, talking sure. about sex <laughs> because on oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because on Anastasia's poster it says what does it say on the poster? It says one third of us would rather give up sex than our mobile phones is this True. So like where, where is it coming it's from? It's coming from actually by uh, from a survey by Boston Consulting Group. Wow. Okay. Uh, so it's a solid it. research. Should do. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a survey. Yeah. You know, like people, uh, but we definitely know. You know, because again, like sex is like the dopamine. Yeah. Uh, but. It's kind of hard dopamine, right? Like you need to make an effort, you know. Right, like it's like an like, <laughs> like you need to move, you need to do something. Uh, whereas you know, if you Not just easy like, dopamine. Yeah, if you just watch porn or if you just like push a button and you get a like, that's a very easy dopamine. Yeah. Uh, there, there is actually another research that says that couples who have iPads in their bedrooms tend to have very little to no sex. Wow. Uh, that's a sa that's a sad statistic, guys. It's so sad. <laughs> but really, I mean, like, oh, you know, our brains prefer very much, you know, like, just like, why, you know, we are lazy people. Yeah. You know, we like to save energy, you know, like, why bother and do something if if we can just exactly. push the button. <laughs> so, guys, if you can, get rid of your mobile phones and your iPads no, in no, your no. bedroom. Uh, in the bedroom, for in sure. The bedroom. In the bedroom, yeah, yeah, no yeah. technology. No, no. And, and your, your sleep will improve tremendously. Oh, this is so life. true, actually, because after after your you article, tried this, right? Yeah. Like with your husband. I, I tried that. So basically, what we did, we got rid of mobile phones in the bedroom, and we bought this analog, uh -huh. you know, clockworks, just to, How did to you wake up in the morning. How did and you find it? it's amazing because I had really awful sleeping problems. I just couldn't fall mm. asleep. It okay. was awful, but it really helped. Yeah. So now. I'm much more relaxed and I fall asleep much quicker. <laughs> so nice. it, it, it's it's perfect. Yeah, and I also think that it's very good for me, as you mentioned before, not to be distracted in the morning with the first thing, you know, grabbing my phone and checking my okay. emails when I'm still in bed. So I think this was crazy. And but when I was doing it, it 
didn't seem crazy because my husband was doing it as well. Everyone is doing yeah. this, right? <laughs> so yeah. now when we both, um, you know, forgot about these habits, mm. it feels so much better. Mm. Yeah. So uh, should we? Uh, so by the way, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in. I think we had some before. Sure. So let me just read yeah, them. Yeah, sure. So what are your tips on managing worries about missing something important? Mm. So it's the fear of missing out. Yeah, right? that's, that's a very big one, right? Um, so B uh, the consultant, strategy consultants uh, of BCG were forced by Harvard scientists to unplug once a week. And actually it took them quite a while to get used to this idea because they were afraid, like they were on the project that the client will be upset, like what, we can't yeah. communicate. They're very highly paid people and they obviously you know they don't want to lose a client. Mm -hmm. And then when scientists actually compared how they were doing compared to other consultants who did not unplug for a week. So they unplugged but they were still working on something. Okay. It's just that nobody could contact them like either by phone or email once a week. So they then compared the two groups and then they found that actually consultants who had predictable time to log off uh, not only performed better, mm -hmm. but they also had better relationships uh, with their colleagues in the group mm -hmm. and with the client. Really? Who didn't mind at all uh, that they have an unplugged as long as he knew that the next day they would be available to answer his questions. Okay. So I think it's, it's, we are telling ourselves very often that, you know, like we can't miss it, everything is important. Yeah, it's like. This is constant bug inside you. The truth is, uh, in the English language, the word priority only existed in singular for many, many years. Really? There can't be something like many priorities. It's just like the invention of the last like, 10 years. Wow. Well, there is one priority. Like there yeah. is a priority. Uh, and everything else, you know, it can happen, but it's okay, you know, like if you miss it. Yeah. Uh, make sure you manage people's expectations. Uh, make sure they know when you're accessible and I think and how you're accessible, you know, like via which channel and uh, yeah. This is perfectly fine. You know, like you can't you know internet is limitless. What's Really limited is our attention our exactly. ability to stay focused on something. Yeah, so actually th like from my experience guys I think it just takes a little bit of time to get used to this process and just let your clients and your colleagues know that these are the times mm -hmm. you are available yeah. And as Anastasia said, it's absolutely fine if you are not like for the rest of the day. And I think after a week or two, this bug inside you just comes down a little bit. So the, I think the only thing you should just have to try and try to calm it down. No, Otherwise, absolutely. I mean, they can be maybe yeah. just like some days when you're, you know, like you have time for yourself to work, like when yeah. it's really important for you. Um, very few things, you know, like we're being sold this myth that we need to be on top of everything, you know, like even mm. some mobile phone companies come up with the slogans that say, you know, like, kind of don't miss anything. It's a marketing thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's so painful to feel that you're like a victim of, of this You're a rat. System. I'm yeah. a rat. We are all, you know, like being little rats. The good thing is, you know, like, we know how to get out of there. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So that's why we build, have Building our own environment, you know. Beautiful brain. Thinking about our own imaginary worlds, <laughs> sharing them with our friends and then exactly. you know, building, building them. So people are saying thank you so much to share your experience with us. I think also it's so important to know how we promote our creativity. Mm. Um, I, I would definitely say do something that feels very authentic. Yeah. Well, two things, delegate and do what feels authentic, yeah? Um, it's a big myth that you need to be on all channels. Yeah. Master one well yeah, and exactly. move to the next one, yeah? Or just stick to one, because for example... No, that's like, what, I'm, what yeah, I was yeah. saying, like, you know, do one channel well, when it works well, move to the next one. Like, even if you're doing it by yourself, if you have yeah. can, can hire somebody who can do the second one for you, do that. But it's much better to do one Instagram well, like one Twitter well, rather than just posting, exactly. posting random stuff. Um, do, do partnerships, lots of them, yeah? Like, do something. People don't like, you know, like to be listening about other people. <laughs> they like talking about themselves. Uh, yeah. But definitely, you know, like find somebody who believes in what you do, uh, you know, like, get them talk about you absolutely uh, somebody who really shares your vision i think it's yeah. much better also like if you don't feel comfortable with promoting yourself uh, fi find like-minded people um, i mean do crazy things uh, i'm gonna do one crazy thing now yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes 
uh, okay guys yeah thank you so much for listening to us so let's just f wrap it up with saying like where uh, the guys can find you and where they can buy your book ah thank you yes so uh we're doing crowdfunding for the book we are 84 percent crowdfunded now i think as of well done the moment of this uh interview <laughs> and our crowdfunding campaign finishes in 10 days uh and if you support the campaign this is when you can get the book um, either an ebook or um, uh, print one. Uh, you can also get digital detox cards, so like printed cards, uh, 30 of them, uh, with a daily tip that oh, you can give as a amazing. present. And Christmas also, is coming. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, a, you will get it before Christmas if okay. you want. Uh, and uh, the link is homodestructors.com. Yeah, let me type it in chat. And well. it's an interesting one because. Come on. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's an interesting one because it actually forces the first website that forces you to unplug. Uh, so it asks you th to see what's written in the website actually to switch off your Wi-Fi. And once you do that, it redirects you to the page of the crowdfunding campaign, uh, just to give you a bit of experience of what it's like. Uh, Fine. Yeah. yeah. So if you want, yeah. So thank you very much for giving me this, this chance uh, to speak. If you want the book, you've yeah. got ten days to buy it, and then it won't be available anymore. So. Yeah, thank so guys, I strongly recommend it. I read some chapters, you know, because actually yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, my photograph is on the cover, so it's another. <laughs> Which is amazing, you know, how Yay. many people like look at this, like wow, this picture. Speaking about collaboration, guys. Yeah. And this was absolutely, <laughs> this was actually absolutely random, you know, like we met once and we worked together. Then yeah. I asked her if she had like any pictures, you know, like it's it's the serendipity. Exactly. So. Sometimes you don't know, but it's worth asking, and mm. it might you know turn out really well uh, all right guys so definitely get the book so the link is in the comments I will post it again in stories and now we will go somewhere to in the middle of the Old Street Junction in London <laughs> with the, the Silicon roundabout that's full of oh, yeah. people working in technology with uh, these amazing posters and just talk to people and we will also give them these stickers they will be able to put on their devices. So it's, it's the stickers basically that remind you to be mindful uh, with how you use technology. If you're around, come over. We're going to be there maybe like for the next like what half an hour or so. Yeah. So guys, if you're around all street area. Yeah. F find us like on the Silicon Roundabout. Yeah. Feel free like to message me and come over if you want. Thank you for listening and bye bye. See you soon.